quarantine workout fails. 10 tips on how to avoid injury while working out during the pandemic. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your number one source for information on orthopedics and sports injuries that's easy to understand for everybody. And I do mean everybody, including you. Okay. If you want to know more about my life as an orthopedic surgeon, be sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Stable Knees. I'm also on TikTok at Dr. Dr. Chris Rayner. If you're looking for exercises, workouts, or information on injury prevention, be sure to follow us on our sister channel on YouTube, Human 2.0. And of course, I want everyone to learn about orthopedics and sports medicine. Help me to educate everybody by sharing this link with anyone who you think might be interested in this topic. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video for my favorite comments from the last video and for the Spark Notes summary. If you want to be part of the team that helps in the preparation of videos and the selection of topics, be sure to check out my Patreon page. The link will be in the description. As a result of the current pandemic, we have been forced to practice social distancing procedures. We have not been able to do the things in society that we would normally be doing. We are unable to go to the gym to work out and we are unable to engage in physical activities outdoors, including sports and other types of outdoor recreation. Consequently, people have become much more interested in working out at home and trying to find ways to remain active. As many people do not have full-fledged gyms in their houses, they need to become creative in finding places to work out and things to use to train while working out at home. Whether it is running up and down a flight of stairs or doing pull-ups in the doorway or whether it's doing kettlebell swings with a jug of milk or overhead presses with a backpack, it is important to think of our home the same way as we would the gym when working out and training. Most of the same rules that apply at the gym also apply at home when we are engaged in physical fitness. Today, I'm gonna to look at some of the people who forgot this while working out at home during the pandemic. I saw this video posted on Facebook the other day and after watching it, it got me to thinking. Don't get me wrong, working out for physical fitness is a good thing and I am happy that these people care about their personal well-being and are looking for ways to maintain their fitness while self-isolated at home. And be sure, that I don't want to make fun of any of these people or make light of the injuries that they may have suffered. I want to use this as an opportunity to think about how we might remain safe while we pursue our fitness goals at home during the pandemic. Trust me, now is not the time that you want to be in the hospital being treated for some injury that you have suffered while working out at home. So today, I'm going to review this video of quarantine workout fails and I'm going to give you my top 10 guidelines for working out at home and staying safe during the pandemic. If I missed something that you think is an important consideration, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. That being said, do me a favor and hit the notification bell and let's get on with reviewing the video. Number one. Be sure that your workout area is free of obstructions and that there is enough room to work out safely in all directions, even overhead. Nobody wants to have a head laceration sutured just because they were trying to get fit. Number two. If you're using exercise bands or anything that is under tension that could break or snap off and smack you in the face or anywhere else in the body for that matter, be sure that it is well secured to the structure that it is attached to. Getting snapped by an elastic band is one thing, but getting hit by an exercise band under tension is quite another and it's definitely gonna leave a mark that just won't buff up. Number three. If you're gonna hang off something or suspend yourself off the ground, the same rule applies. Make sure that it's all attached and fully secured to the structure from which you are hanging. Otherwise, you might find yourself on the floor or ground when you least expect it. And if you happen to be hanging upside down at the moment that it breaks free, you might end up with a concussion, a broken neck, or something even worse. Number four. 
as much as you might want it to be, a lawn chair is not an incline press, especially not if you're going to be pressing heavy weights. Any type of pressing exercise should be done from the floor or from a sturdy metal or wooden bench. Trusting a flimsy piece of patio furniture to hold up under significant weight is a recipe for disaster. Not to mention that it is not even appropriately designed for you to perform this exercise. Like, come on, bro, do you even geometry? The rear legs are not nearly offset enough backwards to prevent you from falling backwards while performing this exercise. Not a good idea. And if you didn't pay attention during geometry class, let me summarize it for you. Don't do it. Not even a little bit. And yo, by the way, a rattan chair, not much better. Again, don't do it. Number five. If you're performing any exercises with barbells and removable plates, be sure to use the clips or some other device to secure the weights to the barbell. Otherwise, the weights can move around on the barbell, changing the distribution of the load in your arms or across your back. This can cause you to become accidentally unbalanced and unsettled, which might lead to an injury or to a fall. In addition, the weight, if unbalanced, could fall off the barbell onto the ground, potentially damaging the floor, objects on the floor, or even you, should your foot be below the weights when they drop to the ground. As I've said before, bones are great in compression, but they suck in rotation, and they get pulverized to smithereens when they get crushed beneath heavy metal objects. Number six. While wall slams are a great way to work at core stability and rotational strength, it's really, really important to make sure that the wall that you are using can actually hold up to the impact of a weighted ball being thrown at it with force. Generally speaking, this means a plywood surface, a concrete wall, or some other equally rigid construction material. Drywall, not so much. And if you can't tell what the wall is made of, then try ball slams on the floor or pick another freaking exercise. Number seven. Arms are not legs. I repeat, arms are not legs. It is much harder to stand on your hands than it is to stand on your feet. We have much more practice standing on our feet than we do standing on our hands. Consequently, there are a few things, consequently, there are a few things to remember when practicing hand balancing. First and foremost, when on your hands, do not work until failure. I said, do not work until failure. Failure, when you're upside down, means a quick trip downwards with your head being the first thing to contact the ground. And if you don't know the proper way to bail from a handstand position, this could mean a one-way ticket to quadriplegia uh, or even death. Second, when hand balancing, it is extremely important to work from surfaces that are securely attached to the ground or that will not move if your body weight shifts. Because the surface area of your hands is relatively small when compared to your feet, and because the length of the lever of your legs is long, relatively small movements of your legs when upside down will cause large movements or transitions in the position of the center of gravity when hand balancing. And this just basically means that small movements of your legs can cause large movements of your body when you are balancing on your hands. Changes in your center of gravity may unsettle surfaces on which you are hand balancing. And again, if they move, then you move just like that. When they move, you move just like that. And that can leave you without a leg or a hand to stand on. Number eight. 
While I previously mentioned to use clips when using barbells or dumbbells with removable weights, it is also a good idea not to hold weights directly over your face when training. And especially not if you're not using clips to secure the weights to the bar. Not only is it possible for you to drop the dumbbell or the barbell on your head or face when you become fatigued, it is also possible for you to inadvertently allow the plates to slide off of the bar to smack you in your face even if you're not fatigued but you momentarily lose concentration and allow the bar to become unparalleled. Nobody wants an orbital fracture or a Lefort fracture. Keep the plates clipped and the bar and the plates away from your face. Number nine. Like a lawn chair, a yoga ball is an unsuitable surface for pressing activities. As it is a sphere, it is quite obviously round. And as such, it is an inherently unstable surface upon which to work. While you're busy concentrating on pumping out that last rep, <laughs> there is little brain space available to concentrate on keeping you stable and level. As a result, you are much more likely to become unbalanced and roll off the platform than anything else. Like the lawn chair, not a good idea. There's a reason why wheels are round and boxes are flat. One is good for rolling, the other is good for stacking. And finally, number 10. Skip the kip. And I know CrossFit athletes are going to be flaming me for this last comment. But when exercising, it is important to follow some simple principles. These principles include establishing a full range of motion of a particular joint then developing strength throughout the full range of motion of that joint. And then finally, being able to master movements throughout the full range of motion of that particular joint. These principles and controlled movements allow one to demonstrate ultimate control of one's own body. While kipping pull-ups can be used to develop upper body strength, a considerable amount of momentum is used to perform this movement. Consequently, it is quite easy to move into positions that are either one, outside of a joint's particular range of motion, or two, might not be attainable with your particular level of strength. And both issues are common problems which lead to injuries in athletes who practice this movement. It is much more valuable to perform strict pull-ups from a dead hang position to a chest to bar position. Full range of motion, check. Strength development, check. Application of strength throughout the full range of motion, check. Demonstration of mastery of movement of one's own body, check. Safe to perform, check. No momentum that will allow you to get into places that you cannot easily get out of without getting hurt, check. Bottom line, skip the kip. So just remember, stay at home and keep active, but keep safe. There's no point in staying at home and avoiding infection with coronavirus if you're just gonna hurt yourself at home and end up in the hospital anyway. I hope that you found this video entertaining and educational. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday orto. Just a flesh wound.